Here's what I, I was friends with Dylan. Holy oh, shit, man. Yeah. Ah. Crazy. Then you just became the best friends all of a sudden. Just like that. Yeah. One fate, fateful New Year's Eve. Just. <laughs> Dude, now that was actually, that was a good night. 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 night. I knew right away because I walked in and Nick was like, man, you got any liquor? I was like, yeah, I got a little bit of liquor. <laughs> He's just like, well, dude, you didn't need to bring it because we got tons of liquor. <laughs> <laughs> he had a whole deep freeze full of all sorts of liquor. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, so we all got right fucking fucked. But uh, yeah, that was a good night. I remember waking up that morning and I just went to the bathroom to take a piss. And I look in the mirror and I notice all these strange little red marks all over my forehead. Look in and she's these little red cuts all over my face. Oh, what I'm like, fuck? what in the fuck is that from? And so then I'm just like looking at it and checking it out. And I walk back down to the kitchen and we all kind of passed out in the living room, I think. So I was making my way back there. And on the way past the kitchen table, I look and I just see a whole fuckload of these smashed up walnuts. <laughs> 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 all over the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, man. Uh, just putting those two together. <laughs> just that that somber moment where you just see the walnuts. You know, no, like, your oh. forehead, like, oh shit. Man. You already know what your forehead's looking like. <laughs> looking for your... at this point, you're looking for the answer. Yeah, you just fucking. Yeah. The moment you come around the corner and see this on the table. <laughs> That's gotta be the first question you ask yourself. Like, is that what fucked my forehead up? Yeah. Hell yeah. It is. Well, then came rushing back the memories. Yeah, exactly. Right. Just tricked all the. Hey guys, check this out! Bro! <laughs> and we were just eating them, snacking on them. You want to <laughs> <laughs> Who likes walnuts? <laughs> I think that was the first time I met Pup, Puss Man. Oh, Puss yeah. Man. Oh, you think that was that night? Puss Face. Puss Face, Puss face sorry. Yeah. Puss face. Well, it's Puss Face, but the saying goes, the Puss Man cometh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a bit of confusion there. It's yeah. really easy to mix up. Puss Face, Puss I am the Puss Man. <laughs> you, he my, is a my friends call me Puss Man, but you can call me Puss Face. So, like, I'm getting that his na- he is a Puss Man. He is a Puss Man. That's like his name. His puss name face. is Puss Face. Exactly. You know how, like, you're a man? So, yeah. he's That's a, like your, your species? Yeah. You're yeah. human, you're gender man? Yeah. He, he's just I am more, a of, man. He's more of a Puss Man than a man. <laughs> yeah. just and then his name is Puss Face. <laughs> Hard columns of pus. Name It's just a series of hard columns of, of pus, essentially. If you had to set up the the image of pus <coughs> face, of pus. Uh, I think it would be very critical. Picture a balaclava, you know, one of those big ski masks, mm-hmm. and then put, get a little pizza sauce <laughs> right on that bottom right corner of yeah, there. A white one, by the way. Oh, yeah. that's, that's so actually a really it, important. Got, it's got to be white. <laughs> And then, like, the tradition was is that I would just, like, me, well, me and Nick would just hang out and I would just wear it all night long and just be this pus face guy. And then, like, I was, like, we were just fucking hanging and we made, like, pizza pockets or something and we just go to bite into them pizza. and I just still had the fucking yeah. mask on and I accidentally got pizza sauce just, like, all over the, just, like, the side of it oh, and, like, around the mouth and stuff and just this, like, pizza sauce stain. And then, like, the next time I did it, we, it was like, because it was always when we'd be like up at like four in the morning, just being a fucking weird. And, and, and I would out. just put this mask on and start being a fucking weird guy. And like, so eventually I just decided it'd be funny if I just never cleaned it. So like, eventually it just had like, it's mixed dad's, like, yeah, yeah. dad's polyglava. So like, yeah, honestly, not you know, so he got pissed. I think later, fair enough. But um, he demands an explanation. <laughs> well, he's like, I wanted to be a creepy guy with just, a, it got so many stains on it after a while, man. It was just such a disgusting because it helped me get into character to be a more disgusting guy. <laughs> It was a disgusting experience. Exactly. Oh, yeah. You're around the guy. The all disgusting facial guy. expressions that he'll give you. And you can't see, you know, like, keep in mind, you can't see, you know, anything besides the mouth and the eyes, really. Yeah. But the mouth says a lot with Puss Face. You it's see important. the way he contorts his lips and, oh my god, that guy, There's you don't see him in the later days. Nice. Yeah, you oh, can yeah. paint a picture with lips and eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be my favorite. <laughs> 
for me, like, when I met Pussface, <laughs> I remember you just, like, wrestled me to the ground. <laughs> And while you're doing everything, you just got these really dramatic and weird jerky head movements, and you're just moving around so weird, so not human, like, yeah. like you don't see a normal guy walking around well, like that. Character, like, right? oh, yeah, he's absolutely. It's a whole different beast. Yeah, it the is a bad coming. Yeah, <laughs> coming for, for you, me. for me. <laughs> so you wrestle me to the ground, take off my belt, off my pants, and then hop up and wraps his. Wraps my belt around his left foot, and then just starts running around, hopping on one leg, just janking his own leg up with the belt, just chasing people around the house like that, whacking them with the end of the belt. That, that sounds like a really revved up version. The place must have been pretty lubricated that night. Yeah. Well, yeah. We were drinking sure. caribou loose for. Oh yeah, that, oh, yeah. that absolutely <laughs> solves the that yeah. You should explain the caribou loo to people who don't know. Oh, caribou yeah, you know, is my favorite drink of all time, and it's the undeniable best drink that you could possibly ever have. <laughs> I learned about it in from multiple that. categories. Too. Exactly, I learned about it from uh, Tech Nine, who's a rapper. Um, he's got a. It's a. I think I don't know if he invented it or if it's just a, a common drink that he's into, but it's basically 151 rum, Malibu rum, and pineapple juice. Now, most people would think 151's in there, so I don't want any of that, <laughs> sir. But the pineapple juice, honestly, and, like, the coconut, like, they all, like, mix yeah. together in a way that, like, it cancels out any possible burn. So you can literally just drink this. It tastes like fucking juice. It's, like, delicious tasting. Right. If you like pineapple juice. Like, it mostly just tastes yeah. like pineapple juice. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't but, know, 151 is 75.5% alcohol. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, yeah. and Malibu is 20%, so it's, like, it's like a lot in there, man. And, and we would yeah, just... Yeah, so you got the Malibu rum as well. Which yes, is awesome. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, like, man, Taco. these drinks pack a fucking punch, but I love them. And But when we were kids, we used to make them, and we used to, like, not measure it at all. We'd just be like... A <laughs> juggaloo. <laughs> And I used to, the best way to make it, the best way to make it is in a big old jug. <laughs> just dump a whole bottle. Exactly. Just dump all your ingredients into one bottle. You're good to go. Big <laughs> ass jug. Get a ladle. Get a ladle. Get some kind of serving apparatus and start hooking up the homies, man. That's what it's all about. You make a juggaloo, that gets the whole crew drunk. We're all getting hammered as fuck with a juggaloo. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's like the funnest drink at a party ever, man. So when I was at Evolve, uh, oh, I man. made this big jug of loo. Like one of those cold <laughs> Like a big one, and it had like a spout that you flipped out, and oh, then you could yeah. pour it, they could tip it. And so I was just, I literally, every like show I went to see, I was just carrying this jug around, being like, who wants a drink? Let's fucking go. Like, just fucking drinking out of this jug, this caribou. And I eventually, and then I started, like, when I started once, I, fell, uh, I took acid and stuff, and was, I, like, developed this crazy, like, bond with my jug. It was honestly insane. And I just loved the jug. And, like, that's one of those things, that, like, the, like we were saying earlier, like, the triggers, man, is, like, when I, like, if I see a jug, I, like, get stoked. I, like, think about that moment in my I life. I like the cut of your jug. I like the cut of your jug. That was my catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> if someone has a jug, that's, like, other jug users say to other jug users. <laughs> hey, nice jug there. I like the cut of your jug. <laughs> this is part of the jug community. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you see another How many jug Facebook name? groups that you want for that? <laughs> see, you see Several. <laughs> Several admin on a couple. I'm an admin on two right now. Yeah. I'm gonna approve for a third. You got fucking Jugman for life and uh, <laughs> Jugger. 420 <Anonymous>. Jug Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Jugger's Anonymous. Uh, yeah. Most people are just Jughead, which yeah. is a classic character, oh, yeah. and then just like whatever number. It's just yeah. Jughead. X-X-X. 69. Whatever. Jughead 69. Yeah, that's a classic. Jughead 69 is one of our top contributors. Actually. <laughs> uh, man, I am... Um, when he touched on sentimental value of the jug, yeah. it was like, I, I had a, a jug that my friend Josh gave to me when I was in Saskatchewan and I was moving on to places in Alberta on my trip. 
and uh, I was hopping on freight trains, and so I had to escape from the Calgary freight train yard because I rode on the train too long, and oh, I didn't shit. realize that there was two. I, I pinpointed where one was in the map, and it was really close to the heart of the city, so I was going to hold on till then. But there was also one at the beginning of like the industrial park area too, which would have been something to assume, anyways. But uh, so I, I held on too long. I wound up in the middle of this yard and had to just escape. Yeah. And so I did after like lots of jumping and climbing fences <laughs> and falling and tumbling around because <laughs> my backpack was like easily fifty pounds on oh, my gear. Yeah. So I was prepared to just live in the bush if I had to too. Right. And so I'd jump off something and just fucking fall on each shit every time. Yeah. There's no way it's gonna catch me. Oh, oh shit. That's okay. Hey. And uh Anyway, so in the midst of all this, I just lost this big water jug that my friend Josh gave to me. And it's like, I haven't oh, seen shit. him in years. And we played in bands together all through school and everything. And so, right. yeah, I started like tearing up because I lost my jug oh, to shit, my friend. Dude. But it's another one of these things because uh, I might come back to these topics often about like Eastern philosophy and yoga and stuff because I've really been trying to like approach it with as much criticism as is necessary. Because right. I don't want to just ever be dogmatic about anything yeah no so, definitely alright so they say this is this accurate or whatever yeah and there's so much emphasis maybe rightly or wrongly because there's a lot of, it's hard to a lot of the problem I think is like just the sheer language you're translating most of these texts from are so different from English and some of them are so old they're not like you translate a, an English text from thousands of years ago there probably even isn't one yeah you know what I mean but then so like the Asian texts, even I would have to guess, or the Hindu texts and stuff, the Sanskrit writings aren't isn't the same language as speaking in India now. No, it's definitely I would have all. to doubt. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, can't, it can't not. Oh, no. So there's just such a huge thing that's lost in translation, and I wonder all the time oh, when I'm reading these books, like if that if the words they're using are actually yeah, the right yeah. definitions, right? I actually. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No worries. But anyways, so one of the things is one is you know not, not being attached to material objects or possessions or anything right. like that. There is something to that, obviously, because just like everything expires, every person dies, yeah. every possession you have is basically something borrowed and not something owned because yeah. it's going to break or get lost or get stolen or mm-hmm. any, something's going to happen to you. You're not going to have it forever. Or you're going to die and you're not going to get to experience having it because you don't yeah. exist anymore. For sure. So everything's temporary. So you need to know that. But then... I don't think there's anything wrong with having attachment sentimentally to things. You know what I mean? Like, your friend yeah. gives you this water jug when you're traveling and stuff. Yeah. It's like your connection to this person that you've had a deep connection with. For sure. And um, it's the same with, like, an instrument that you've spent years playing on or anything like that. Or or just, like, any kind of material, physical object gift. Or, six, like, what about a carver who might build his own coffee table and do a beautiful job of it and has it yeah. for decades? Yeah, totally. It's like, if he lost it, it something real would have been lost like something of actual value even though it's a material thing you know it's more than that and, and I also kind of think that we wouldn't evolve the capacity to have sentimental attachment to things if it wasn't for some sort of purpose I mean if people had some sort of real sentimental attachment to things now there'd probably be less waste because we just throw things away as soon as they break you yeah know? that's true but if you hold on to something and sew it every time it rips or whatever or fix it every time it breaks yeah you just build this connection with it. Yeah, definitely. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think maybe people should be more attached to their items because they're resource. They're yeah. made from resources, and someone had to make them, and someone had to harvest raw materials to process and in order to make whatever it is that we have and own. It's like people should give more respect to their items instead of just buying a whole new wardrobe every season or something. You know, yeah. it's like just so wasteful. Mm. We don't have the. We can't afford to waste. <laughs> I have something I'd like to share with you. Please. Oh, is this the song? <laughs> yes. So last night, myself, Nick McDonald, Adam Coolstrom, oh, Dan Wilson, Kendall Wilson, and Donnie Walls produced the oh, first nice. adult rec rap, which is the name of our adult recreational rap league. <laughs> I gotta grab a beer. Uh, the first song. I don't really know what we're gonna call it yet. But this is it. I'm gonna play it as soon as Taryn gets I've heard it's good. I've heard good things. He was able to get out and see Poop's train. I know. He's the man. But we had so much fun last night that we're gonna be doing it again for sure. You'll get in on it. Yeah. 
We actually had a fucking blast. Uh-huh. Sick. Dan and Kendall. Dan, Kendall, Adam, myself, and 